And, and so when you stepped in, uh, I, re- I actually remember this. Uh, there was a huge focus on historically pension managers have essentially gone out, found the best asset managers you know, in the world, uh, and they give them the money. And there's all these questions about fees and structure and risk they're taking and kind of all the things that come with who are we giving our money to and you know, what's the probability that they're going to give us back a great return. You took a very different approach uh, and one that I think now has become uh, one replicated in other places, uh, but two, also more and more people are starting to say, wait a second, like that may be something that makes a lot of sense. So let's talk through just kind of at a high level, like what the philosophy of the invest, uh, investment strategy is, and then we can get into some more of the tactical things that you guys did. Awesome. Okay. Um, so here's the philosophy is for starters, so pensions allocate asset, right? We, we have an, you know, an asset allocation to exactly what you expect, right? To stocks, bonds, real estate, uh, other, you know, some pensions might have commodities, might have diversifying strategies. I mean, all, so there's all different things. And then of course there's subclasses within those, okay? The, um, now within, so, so that's kind of the top of the stack, let's say, are the, are the asset classes then sub asset classes. And then how do you get those invested? Most pensions allocate, invest that money, which we'll call allocating, okay? Um, invest that money through third party managers. That is smart. That is a smart way to do it, okay? That is smart, if I didn't mention it three times already. Um, what you, I, I, you don't wanna build some big investment team to be picking stocks, finding private equity investments, God help you. Pensions have done all right in direct investing in real estate. Um, and I saw you had a tweet last night. Somebody wants to let's talk about real estate absolutely in a little bit um, when, we, when we're drilling down. Um, so they've done okay in that. And there's a sort of limited kind of trouble you can get in, let's say, with real estate, um, unless the brother-in-law, one of the trustees, uh, right, is, is a developer. And, you know, you're laughing, <laughs> pal. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because I've read the stories. I know what happens. <laughs> so, but like when, so, so when you took over, right, there's 24 or 18 to $24 billion, somewhere in there. Uh, you guys are actually not doing well. Third, third percent or quartile of performance. And you basically, from what I understand, walked in and just started saying, look, let's get into kind of a, just start slashing fees, make sure that we're not spending a bunch of money to to actually get our capital invested. Um, And then you took this kind of disciplined, systematic approach that was really focused on innovation. So kind of explain what that means when you say a disciplined, systematic approach with an overweight or focus on kind of technology and innovation. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, um, so the portfolio that I inherited um, had two, 300 managers across, right? So no pot, could you imagine like, <laughs> it, and by the way, it was volunteer. Um, so uh, I was re- willing to really kind of get in. I was going to be, you know, I, I was soon to be elected chairman. And, but I mean, what are you going to do with two or 300 managers? You can't possibly wrap your arms around it. And really we should be focusing on the top of the stack on allocation um, and, so right away, you know, I often say I had no preconceived notions on things like hedge funds, private equity, credit, you know, opportunistic credit, real estate, et cetera. Um, but I did have a preconceived notion that a sh- you want to simplify, you want to be able to understand what the hell it is you have, right? You have board meetings quarterly. We have, my, maybe you'll have six a year, right? So, um, and you got a lot to do in them. And you've got a limited staff. So you want to simplify. And it's funny, I, I, in a million, so I love indexing. I index about half my, half my own assets. The beautiful thing about indexing is once you, you take that allocation to the top of the stack I was telling you about, you know, public market equities, domestic, right? Domestic, internationally, right? If you do index, there's nothing to do. Like you're done. You don't need a staff. You don't need, you don't, the board doesn't need to discuss it. You are going to get the market return, right? And there's all this attacking of, you know, that it's, you know, terrible and you end up owning a bunch of stuff. You know, I mean, look at the assets that to this day are the concentrations in the SP 500. So, which again, we can get to a little bit later is like sort of go through your question. So, so index, what I didn't realize though, is I had no idea. So all pensions, 
pensions operate around around the government, right? They're funded by governments, you know, these state pensions, which is mo most of the pension assets. Um, anytime you have government around, you're going to have politics around. And um, early on, like I got, it's unbelievable. I'm driving somewhere, I get a call, and I don't recognize the number, but it's a lobbyist. It's a lobbyist <laughs> calling me about some manager that they hear that we, we're going to be, you know, reduce, shortening the, you know, simplifying the manager roster. And um, I'm like, do you realize you're calling me is a material piece of data, right, that will support getting rid of your, whoever you're calling me about? Please don't tell me the name. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I mean, that happened. And that, by the way, happened more than once. Um, and um, so I was, uh, I, I, I was fortunate in that I had, you know, the governor, governor staff were super supportive of what kind of whatever it is I did, I think. And so as soon as those calls went in over there, they're like, deal with Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it was a brick wall. Okay. And, and, and it feels like um, as you step in as the chairman, like really you, you said it already, right? Like the goal is, do we get the asset allocation, right? Meaning, we're going to take 10% put in real estate. We're going to put, you know, 60% in stocks. We're going to put in, you know, here's how we break it down across all the different indices, whatever it ends up being. Most people will then spend tons and tons of time on, well, which manager do we select within oh. this bucket? What you're basically making the argument for, and, and you guys did, was you basically said, look, if most of people aren't going to beat the industry benchmark, then why don't we just invest in the industry benchmark? <laughs> and therefore, yes, there might be one or two people who beat it, but we're going to beat 80, 90% of the managers in this space anyways, by just investing in the benchmark, it's easier. We just buy it. We don't have to go and check on a manager, do all that kind of stuff. And then also it's usually much cheaper on top of that, right? And there's an, and there's an additional advantage, which is, so the, the, the meeting that I was elected chairman of, we terminated, so there were four managers out of the hundreds that were on watch. So I'm like, surely, if we have like 200 matches, we can, we can at least terminate the four that are on watch and have been on watch for a year for, or more than a year. So, um, so sure enough, of course, the media was there and there was a, you know, our articles were later, yada, yada, which I think actually to me, they, they, they I think started out as hit pieces. They made, I think they made us look terrific. Um, but here's what I noticed though. So in the investment committee meeting, when we were really getting into the guts of this, one of the trustees on the other side of the table, I mean, got pretty pissed of like, you know, you're, you know, we got an RFP for a general consultant because which was kind of part of all of this. Um, and uh, you terminate these matters like, you know, and got really pissed. And I could say, you know, this is kind of thing that I think happens over and over, often happens behind closed doors, maybe with a staffer, okay, who needs a board to like that. Anyway, once at, sort of people chilled a little bit and then we had board meeting and same kind of, you know, kind of energy entered the room, lots of heat. And then, and so at one point they, the vote was going to be the vote and the vote ended up being six to three um, and eight to one actually on a couple of terminations. So this trustee sit, finds, sits down, it's like, all right, Mark, what are you putting the money into? And I, I'm like, it's going to be indexed. And all the heat came out of the room. And that's what gave me the idea to write that first Wall Street Journal op-ed. Like indexing not only is a terrific way to invest, okay, it also is a beautiful, beautiful governance tool to keep people out of trouble. Okay, like just recently that North Carolina senator, you know, or Georgia, wherever the hell they are, um, and you know, this has happened kind of over and over where, right, it's like if you index, no, you're, you, sort of, you really become impenetrable from the peanut gallery shooting at you. And in this case, where some managers were getting terminated, and by the way, the manager are perfectly good people doing a professional job. I never once suggested that wasn't the case, and it wasn't the case. They were just kind of a little under their benchmark. At best, they'd be at their benchmark. And I was just trying to simplify things, and that's where our board ended up. And, um, and so by indexing, you take the insult out of it. And, and the other piece of this pump is, and, and, you know, and actually some, so there's a, a professor actually is at Arizona State, um, Sunil Wahal, who I've quoted a couple of times in some of, my, some of my materials, who's done great, great academic research, uh, which I kind of got obsessed with on institutional investor decisions. By the way, this is not just pensions. This is endowments, foundations. Everyone suffers from this. 
of you're constantly firing managers and hiring other ones. Okay, flavor of the month. All right. And so it's like beautiful academic research that in like 80, 90% of the cases, the manager you replace that came in is kind of underperforming their benchmark as you know, within sort of a year or two. Uh, and you're just running on a treadmill. You're wasting your time. 